Hello and welcome back to another Table Topics with Bill. Today we are going to look at the ridiculously stupid system for heavy weapons in D&D 5e. And then I'm going to fix it and it's going to blow your mind. I know more than you. So have you ever wondered why heavy weapons in D&D do such varying degrees of damage dice? Because I certainly have. I've wondered how is it possible that a heavy weapon that's six pounds does around the same damage that a heavy weapon that's 18 pounds or somewhere in between? And I started to think of this, is this just a 5e thing or is it, you know, older? Does it harken back to older editions of the game? So I started doing a little research and the very short version of this research is that number one, 5e has fewer weapon options than previous editions. Um, they simplified it. They, they reduced the amount of great weapons, uh, heavy two-handed weapons, as options. But even in older editions, um, there was this inconsistency in terms of like how much damage heavy weapons did. So even from like third edition, you had large weapons, large weapons. They weren't even, you know, it was small, medium, and large. But you had a ton of large weapons. Falchions, fl heavy flails, glaive, great axe, great club, great sword, gizarm, halberd, long spear, ransour, scythe. All of these things that were considered large were based on their length but also their weight. And all of those in that large category were like 10 pounds or heavier. Now the crazy thing is is that these things did anywhere from 2d4 to 1d10 to 1d12 to 2d6 to 1d8. So it, it was really inconsistent. But then you look in 5e and in 5e um, a heavy weapon is not defined by its weight or length. Like there's nothing in the note, the heavy tag is described only as in terms of how it affects small people who want to use it. Heavy, small creatures have disadvantage on attack rules with heavy weapons. A heavy weapon's size and bulk make it too large for a small creature to use effectively. So that doesn't mean that a halfling couldn't use uh, a pike, for example. It just means that they would have disadvantage in the 5e mechanics. But that still doesn't address the inconsistency in terms of damage. So let's take a look at what the normal damage as it's listed for 5e for heavy weapons is. All right, starting at the top of the heavy weapons, alphabetically we have Glaive, which is listed as a 1d10 damage and it weighs six pounds. Then we have Great Axe, 1d12, seven pounds. Great Sword, 2d6, six pounds. Halberd, 1d10, six pounds. Lance, 1d12, six pounds. Maul, 2d6, 10 pounds. And then popping in, in the largest category, is the Pike, which is 1d10 and 18 pounds. So how do we explain this? Like, I'm sure I'm certain that there are going to be people, and maybe you are one of those people who in the comments will, will talk about weight and momentum and basically the physics of wielding these weapons. You know, how longer weapons maybe give you a certain degree of leverage and that creates more momentum and then the weight plus the momentum equals higher damage, blah, 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 blah. But here's what I'm saying from a gaming mechanic. If you have a player who wants to use a two-handed heavy weapon as their primary weapon, why is it that if that player chose a great axe, that weapon's gonna do 1d12 versus a maul, which is gonna do 2d6, or a lance, which is gonna do 1d12? So why, why is the maul or the great sword a 2d6 versus uh, a lance or a great axe that does 1d12? So mechanically, imagine that you are rolling your damage dice. You're that player, you're rolling that damage dice, if you're using the Great Axe, you're going to roll a d12. If you roll a 1, you add in your damage modifier, boom, that's it. That's still pretty minimal. Whereas the person who chose a Great Sword is going to roll 2d6, which means their minimum damage is going to be 2 if they rolled 2 ones. So automatically, a Great Sword or a Maul are actually superior, mechanically speaking, when it comes to damage for heavy weapons. So all of these things seem preposterous to me. They seem ridiculous. That that weapons that are all pretty much six or seven pounds, other than the maul and the pike, um, do like this varying degree of damage. It just seems very random. So I'm ready to show you my fix. And 
you might want to put on a diaper because you're, you're about to crap yourself. Here's how easy this fix is. For all of these heavy weapons, all of these great two-handed heavy tagged weapons, just make the damage 3d4. 3d4 plus their strength modifier. That means that automatically the benefit to wielding this two-handed heavy weapon is that your minimum damage now is going to be three. That's better than any of the normal damage listed in the 5e player's handbook for any of those heavy two-handed weapons. So once you adopt this 3d4 methodology, you will see that those players who make the sacrifice to not be able to use a shield, for example, or to not dual wield, but make that sacrifice to use a heavy two-handed weapon are getting something for that sacrifice. That means that their character's damage is going to be more impactful even if they roll the minimum for damage. So I hope that my fix for heavy weapon damage has been helpful and beneficial. If you appreciate this, comment below, share your insights, your thoughts, your experiences, and whether or not you would use my system in your games. And also, thank you for your support, for liking and subscribing, and I will see you on the next episode of Table Topics with Bill. Peace, love, bye. This is a test. Karafa, get the f out of the way. We're gonna take a look at the very, very. Um. See, God damn it, Karafa. This is a test to see how this sounds and how it looks and whether or not it's in focus. You know what? I'm gonna stab you. Well, hello and welcome to Bill Allen World. I am Wizzy the Wizard. I'm back once again to remind you to subscribe and click on the notifications button and also watch videos that are over there. Tune in to the next episode of whatever show you are just watching and watch other shows featuring Bill. He made me say that because he's a narcissist. Okay, bye.